Hello everyone, welcome back. It's time to ruffle some feathers. I'm talking about the worst comic books I've ever read. Several of these are very popular books. Many of these books you may have read. Um, these are just my least favorite. Obviously, there are so many books I've never read, so many books I've never even heard of, and I'm sure there's worse ones out there, but these are my list. I don't even know why I'm smiling when I'm making this video. It's just, I just know that people are gonna be ruffled a bit, so. Let's kick it off with Dark Knight's Death Metal. So this is uh, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. It's a sequel, a, a, a continuation of the widely popular uh, DC Death Metal series, which I never read, which may have influenced my uh, decision to put this on this list. It's very intentionally, it's seemingly intentionally confusing. It's not uh, consistent throughout. Their art is so busy. We're talking multiverse things, which you guys know if you're followers of the channel. I'm not a huge multiverse guy. I don't understand it. I just wish things were in continuity. Um, but yeah, it, it is out there. It makes little to no sense. It's, it's not really good writing. I mean, even if you have a confusing or, or complex issue, you, you should at least be able to write it in such a way that uh, you can keep the reader's attention, hold interest, and really kind of catch the reader up on what they've missed. So, uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal is definitely on the list. Next one on the list is Doomsday Clock. So this came out uh, fairly recently, 2017, 2018, 2019. Uh, this is Jeff Johns, and it's a seemingly like a continuation of The Watchmen uh, by Alan Moore, which Whenever you're in that Watchmen universe or you're writing anything uh, that a after Alan Moore has had his fingerprints on, which I can't imagine following Alan Moore after sw on, on the run on Swamp Thing. But anyway, getting back to this, terrible, con uh, terrible characters, characters you don't care about. The characters we know and love aren't there. Um, it's not a sequel. It's not a continuation. Also, when these issues came out, there were long periods of time in between the issues, which made it even more confusing and convoluted, which it's already that in itself. The story doesn't make any sense. It, it's, it's terrible. It's literally terrible. I couldn't think of a worse way to continue something so great, so awesome as The Watchmen, but it, it may just have been an impossible, impossible task. But it kind of follows that same thing as where The Last Ronin, where you know so much time in between the issues and especially when you have like a 12 issue series like this you just can't do that there it seems like there was no plan like this the storyboard was not written out like they just kind of went by the seat of their pants doomsday clock that's a big skip for me next one on the list this is a brand new book this is superman son of cal l this is tom taylor now i know a lot of people love this book and i do not know why the, this book got really hot. This actually got like really big media attention. Like I saw it on CNN, Fox News, like all the big media outlets picked this up. He was doing like interviews on this. And why was he doing that? Obviously because of Superman's son, his sexuality. So this was a uh, decision uh, at DC to uh, choose his uh, sexual orientation and Seemingly, it is the only reason why this was story was made. I mean, it is it is so obvious that this was a cash grab. This was attention seeking. It it just it's bad. And and Tom Taylor, I, I, I know I'm ruffling a lot of feathers here. He is one of the worst writers that I'm seeing. I know he a lot of people love his uh, Nightwing. I never read that, but man, the, it is his stories are so by the book so predictable, so following the same beats, the tried and true beats, and he doesn't even do them better. He doesn't do them differently. This is a hard no for me. I read the first four issues. I was done. This next one, I'm sorry, I've already made a video on this. It's on the list again. This is Spawn, Todd McFarlane. Um, it, it does not stand the test of time. Spawn is literally a time capsule of what comics were like in the 90s. Um, Spawn is uh, overly busy art, a story that is decent in of it, but questions remain unanswered. You have to go so long in the series for, for things to happen. It's kind of like one of those video games. It's like, well, it doesn't get good until about 50 hours in. And I'm like, 
I don't want to read 50 issues before it gets good. I want it to be good now. So uh, Spawn is possibly and very likely the most overrated comic in comic book history, in my opinion. So Spawn makes the list. This next one is another recent read. This is The Scumbag by Rick Remender. Um, Rick Remender is very, very popular. He has written uh, many stories. Most notably on my, uh, on my shelf here is his Uncanny X-Force run. That was one of the first omnibus I ever read. Um, that's actually a grail now. It's out of print at the time of this filming. But anyway, Scumbag is one of the most woke books I've ever read. Take the premise of a drug addict, a degenerate, a lowlife, a scumbag, and he gets powers and goes on a magical journey where he quickly meets the villains of Rick Remender's uh, deepest, darkest fears, and that's his political agenda. It is... it. It's insufferable. It's it's honestly it like hurt me to read this. Like it was just so over the top, so in your face, so shoving his political views down your throat. I'm like I'm I'm done. I'm I can't do this. And the most this sad thing about it all is I remember trying to. I was like I think I missed an issue, and I was I was hoping that it was going to get better. And in the beginning, it was okay. I remember going to the counter and saying, "Hey, do you have that new scumbag issue?" and and as it was coming out of my mouth, I was like, oh, man. I was humiliated. I was like, you got that new scumbag? I need that new scumbag. Next on the list, this one's going to ruffle some feathers. Uh, this is Batman Hush, Jim Lee. Um, man, this is the worst Batman story I've read. It is predictable. You can see the villain coming from a mile away. You know who it is. We have this situation where we just try to throw other villains in, like the rogues gallery. We throw them in. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, Poison Ivy is kind of the star of the show, and I actually have the Poison Ivy hush. If you've never seen the Superman statue, uh, the hush line from Prime 1, that thing is a, is a masterpiece. I'd love to have that, but you can't find it. But anyway, Batman hush, so overrated. Um, the art is, I am not a fan of that. It's just the panels are so busy. You can't tell what's going on. I know Jim Lee is, is, is one of the gods of X-Men, but, and he failed Batman on this. Batman Hush, that's a no-go for me. And last on the list here is Rorschach, another Watchmen tie-in. If you can't see the connections, the parallels here, is one of the most boring comics I've ever read. Now, I'm not a huge noir or spy uh, reader of reader or movie watcher, anything like that. That's probably my, one of my least favorite genres. But man, Rorschach was one of my favorite characters in Watchmen. He is my favorite character of Watchmen. And to see what this series became, I mean, it was it was so boring. I stopped after it was like two or three issues. I was done. Didn't care about the story. Didn't care. They made Rorschach boring, and I'm like, oh man. It was brutal. I think it truly is impossible to follow something like The Watchmen, something so great. And and, and even Frank Miller failed with uh, the sequel to Dark Knight Returns. It's just, when you make something so incredible to follow it up, it just, it just doesn't work. Guys, I'm sure I ruffled many feathers. I'm sure I've lost many subscribers because of this video. What are your uh, least favorite comic books that you've ever read? What's the least favorite comic book in your collection? Let me know. Do you guys keep comics that you don't like? That's also an interesting thing because many of these comics I've sold, got rid of, because they just don't interest me anymore. Let me know. If at any point in time you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.